gentlemen, dear graduates, welcome to the Baherty School graduation ceremony celebrating the class of 2023. Please welcome with a round of applause the Kodo Jazz Band. We get almost every night when that moon is big and bright. It's a supernatural delight. Everybody's dancing in the moonlight. Everybody is out of sight. They don't bark and they don't buy. They keep things loose and they keep it tight. Everybody's dancing in the moonlight. Dancing in the moonlight. Everybody's feeling warm and bright. It's such a fine and natural sight. Everybody's dancing in Please welcome the president of the Hertie School, Professor Dr. Cornelia Woll. Distinguished speaker, dear Amundsen, deans, directors, faculty, and staff of the Hertie School, proud parents, families, friends, and guests, and most of all, so I can say it one last time, dear students, it is my great pleasure. <laughs> it is my great pleasure to present to everybody in the room today the graduating class of 2023. What an honor and joy it is for me to welcome you today here at the Admiralspalast in the heart of Berlin, in the second most beautiful building on Friedrichstraße, <laughs> to celebrate your graduation. Today marks the day where we celebrate the successful conclusion of your studies at the Hertie School, a moment you've all worked very hard for. You are a total of 300 graduates from 55 different countries a testament to the diversity and talent it takes to tackle the problems of today and to make the future better for everyone. 
in order, us for, in order for us to get a better grasp of who and where you are, please make some noise when your group is called. You are 165 Master of Public Policy graduates. Now this is the largest group, but let's see what we can do in terms of noise, because we always also have 91 Master of International Affairs graduates. We also have, and are very proud, 21 graduates from the very first cohort of the Master of Data Science for Public Policy. Also, for the first time, we are celebrating nine graduates from the Executive Master of Public Administration in this festive spring ceremony. And those that have spent the most amount of time with us for good reason in order to produce a doctoral dissertation, seven PhD graduates. As is good tradition, a graduation ceremony would not be complete without a commencement speaker who offers words of advice and inspiration. This is a tricky task given your diverse regional backgrounds and the many career trajectories and policy challenges that drive your passion for public affairs. We are therefore extremely honored to have convinced today's commencement speaker, Member of Parliament Armand Sorn, to take up this challenge. Please allow me to introduce our special guest. As a member of the German Parliament for the SPD since 2021, Armand Sorn was directly elected by his constituency in Frankfurt, a city that is home not just to the European Central Bank and Germany's financial sector, but also our own Hertie Foundation. In his current role, he serves on the Committees for Digital Affairs and Finance and, among other positions, is a member of the Franco-German Parliamentary Assembly. Not just his political work, but also his trajectory holds many insights for our graduating class. Born in Yaoundé, Cameroon, Mr. Tsan moved to Halle an der Saale, where he graduated from high school and studied political science and history. He then moved on to study European affairs at Sciences Po in Paris, political science and public administration at the University of Constance, international economics at Johns Hopkins University in Bologna, and then returned to the University of Halle-Wittenberg for a degree in law and economics in a double degree with Southwest University of Political Science and Law in Chongqing, China. I know very few careers so rooted in three continents before even finishing university. His career included positions at the French National Assembly, PricewaterhouseCoopers, and the GIZ before he became elected to the Bundestag in 2021. Dear Armand Zorn, you are a role model in seizing opportunities and working hard in every aspect of public life to provide gov better government services, to design more innovative public policies, to reinforce economic justice around the world and making the underrepresented heard. In short, to make the world a better place. You represent a new generation of young leaders whose experience, determination and courage will shape the future. So without further ado, dear class of 2023, Please join me in giving a warm welcome to Aman Son. Dear President Vaux, dear class of 2023, dear family members, dear friends, it's my greatest pleasure to be here today with you, and uh, I can say that I'm well aware this is a very special day for you guys today. And it's my greatest pleasure and honor to be part of this day, and let's make it a memorable day, let's make it a historical day you will never forget. And I'm going to do my best to give, deliver a commencement speech that you will ne never forget, hopefully you will never forget. 
but in a positive way, hopefully. <laughs> and um, maybe before I start, let me say it's quite courageous from you guys to invite a policymaker, a member of parliament, to come here to hold a commencement speech. You know, it could go wrong, to be honest. But no, jokes aside, obviously it does make sense that the School of Public Policy, one of the best school of public policy in the world, invites a member of parliament to come here today and share a couple of words with you guys. So it's my greatest pleasure to be here. And And I also want to share some German tradition, some parliamentary tradition with you guys today. So I brought an interesting tradition from the German Bundestag with you today since I just came from the Bundestag. And unfortunately, I need to leave uh, after, after a couple of minutes again. We have this tradition at the German Bundestag whenever someone is holding a speech and he says something quite interesting. All the people, all the other members of the parliament would say, hurt, hurt. So I will suggest the following for today. Whenever I say, dear class of 2023, 20, I want you guys to say? <laughs> okay, we can do it better. Come on, come on, come on. So whenever I say, dear class of 2023, you guys are saying? <laughs> much better, much better, great. Thank you very much, thank you very much. Um, so I wanna share a couple of personal stories today with you guys because I can relate, I can relate with you guys today. I know how you're feeling or I have a sense of how you may be thinking today. So I thought about what could be the stories that I want to share with you guys today. And I have brought two stories for you guys. The first story is about somehow my personal background. As President Cornelia Boll was saying, I was born in Cameroon. I grew up in Cameroon, and maybe some of you guys are familiar with Cameroon. It's a small country in Central Africa. It's obviously a developing country, and you know that poverty and lack of infrastructure, education, there are a couple of struggles, and that's where I was born. That's where I grew up. And I was lucky to be able to go to school, so I was going to school, but I actually witnesses how economic hardship can affect someone's life. I actually had to witness how several of my classmates, several of my friends, were not able to go to school or continue going to school just because their parents weren't able to pay their school fees. And this is something that always you know, challenged me from the very young age on. So when I grew up, when I continued going to school, when I came to Germany, started finished my high school degree, started studying and went on and so forth, I always had in mind that I've met some people, I have had some friends that were very motivated, working as hard as I was doing, but never had the same chance that I did. And sometimes I actually felt quite bad about it. Why me? Why am I the privileged one able to go to school, study what I want to study, learn what I want to learn, and do that in peace? And then someday I made my peace with it, and I want to tell you how I made my peace with it. I told myself, this is not something I can change. The situation is like it is. Somehow I'm lucky, somehow I'm privileged. It's because my parents worked enough, it's because they worked hard, it's because they understood or they thought that education is quite important for my future. But these are things that I can't change. But what I can change were two things. First of all, in everything that I'm doing, make sure that I succeed, that I, I'm the best at what I'm doing. It's, I'm not gonna be able to succeed with always being the best because obviously other people are also working as hard as I do or more intelligent or whatsoever. But it's my duty, it's my responsibility actually to take all the things that I'm doing, all the edu education part of my life serious as possible and make sure that I not only study for myself but I make sure that all the people that I know and the people that I don't know that never had the same opportunity that somehow I take it seriously and I make sure that I also study for them somehow. That was the first part, the first responsibility associated with that. The second part was I told myself it shouldn't stop with me. It shouldn't be an exception. It shouldn't be one in a million. It shouldn't be just one person being able to fulfill his dreams, to go on, study, learn a lot, and collect all these degrees. But it's actually my responsibility to continue working and making sure that other people, other generation can also benefit from the same resources I benefited. To make sure that other people can also go to school, study in peace and, and, and come to other universities and make sure that they can graduate. So 
my first message to you today is to make sure that I know you have different backgrounds. I know that you were required to make a lot of sacrifice, a lot of efforts to be here today. And I want to use this opportunity and congratulate you and tell you this is great what you have achieved so far. It doesn't matter how hard the way, the, the way here was. This is great what you have done so far. Please, dear class of 2023, <laughs> give yourself a big round of applause, please. But as you know, with great powers comes greater responsibilities. And now you're graduating from one of the best schools in the world. So I want to challenge you. I want to motivate you. I want to tell you, once you walk out these doors, make sure that what you have learned during the last year here, the network you have built, the relationships you have established, all the baggage you have taken away from the Heritage School here, make sure that you don't only use it for yourself, but try to use it for other people as well. Make sure that you use your powers and your qualities also for the good of other people and make sure that other generations can also benefit from this kind of education. And this will be my ask to you and that's what I'm asking you. Now, now the challenges are getting more and more complicated. And as an MP, I can tell you lots about that. Um, we are spending a lot of hours negotiating and trying to, write, uh, trying to find the right policy in order to address all the challenges we're currently facing. And when I'm looking into you, I'm very hopeful because I know there's a young generation out here, there's a generation of well-qualified people here, ready to go out and then take it to the next level and make sure that we achieve all the challenges or we face all the challenges we're currently facing and we find the right solution for all that kind of people. But I also want to say because it can be a very frustrating situation. I don't know how you guys deal with it, but for me, as a member of parliament, I was elected on a very optimistic platform. I was running through the street of Frankfurt with a lot of enthusiasm and saying I want to change the world and I'm, and I'm going to change the world. Now it's uh, almost one and a half years since I am elected member of parliament. And I'm realizing, well, it's kind of great to have this idealism to be very optimistic about the future. But at the end of the day, these are quite challenges where you need to find other people, you need to convince other people and find the majority, not only within the parliament, but also within the entire society. So I look at you as agents of change. I look at you as people that can go out to other people, to other communities, not only to the to your friends and family members and colleagues that have the same opinion with you when it comes to certain policies, but especially to those that feel left out, especially to those that where we need to convince them more. That's where I need you. That's where we need you guys to go out there and make sure that you reach out also to people with different opinions in order to form a big coalition, not only within the political system, but within the entire society in order to drive change. And, and this is my second message. And here also I'm trying to share the personal story of mine. Because when you see all the challenges we're facing, and when you see the speed at which we are going with the changes we are currently putting on the way, you can become very frustrated. And as you may know, decisions are most of the time a compromise. Whenever you have different groups involved and you want to have a majority, somehow you need to find a compromise where a majority can agree to. So sometimes, I feel very frustrated also in my job when I see what we should be doing and what we are doing. There's always a difference. And what is helping me a lot to survive on a daily basis, what is pushing me a lot to go on and fight for more and more, and that's what I want to pass on to you, is to understand that even changes on a small scale are good and exactly what we need. We are always looking for the moon. We're always trying to change things at once. But I want you to understand, and I want you to give it on your way that if you are able to change the life of someone on a daily basis, if you're just improving the life of people on a daily basis, on a small scale, scale this is huge. This is huge and this is what we should be looking for. So, dear class of 2023, <laughs> dear class of 2023, <laughs> I want to tell you, go out in the world, conquer the world, make sure that you take a lot of people with you on the journey. 
try to make our world better every day, on every single, single day, and if we all do it, if we all do it together, then I'm quite confident, I'm quite positive, we're going to be able to fight the big, uh, to address the big challenges we're currently facing. With the small steps on every day, with each one of you, we're going to be able to make also the big steps. So dear class of 2023, I wish you a very nice day. Enjoy your day. This is your day. Make it historical. Celebrate today. Celebrate tomorrow. Celebrate the entire weekend. And I'm looking forward to continue working with you in making our world a little bit better. So have a very nice day. And thank you very much for having me. Please welcome the Dean of Research and Faculty, Professor Dr. Kai Wegrich. Dear Amundsen, dear Hertie School colleagues, proud parents, families, friends, and guests, dear class of 2023, And dear PhD researchers, they were on the balcony a couple of minutes ago, but I think they have moved uh, uh, over there. My name is Kai Wegrich, and I'm Dean of Research and Faculty here at the Hattie School. I'm, and I'm here today to congratulate seven young academics and to celebrate their achievement, the successful completion of their PhD, the end of their doctoral journey. These seven young women and men have achieved this in more than difficult times. The bulk of their work has been completed during the COVID-19 pandemic. Congratulations, well done. I want to address in particular the parents, partners, and other family and friends of these doctoral researchers. You might have asked yourself, maybe one or two times, why? Why work so hard to complete a PhD project? Earning little money, working long days, taking concerns about research design, data, causal inference, everywhere they go. To rephrase Sting, every breath I take, I think of you, PhD project. <laughs> so why? I have three answers. The first answer might be reputation. At least in Germany, the doctoral degree can, be become, can become part of your name. You can call on the authorities, if you get an appointment, to put the doctor on your healthcare card. That might be particularly useful uh, when you have a medical appointment. The medical doctor will ask you in which field you did your PhD. But sorry, that's not because they are interested in what you did. She just wants to know if you're a medical doctor as well to make her life a little bit more difficult. But of course, the real reason, and that's the second answer to pursue a PhD, is that the doctoral degree is the entrance ticket into academia. Notice parents and partners, um, not a ticket for a job, just for being able to apply for a job in academia. Uh, during the doctoral journey, PhD researchers learn a trait we call that research or science. And if your loved ones care about this world, well, there is no alternative than to go all the way through and finish a PhD. But I think there's a third answer, and I find that most interesting, and I would call that answer grit. A person that has managed to complete a PhD, having worked three, four, or more years on one major project, and managing hopefully enjoying life at the same time. This person knows, I can do that. I can climb this mountain. Knowing that you have the determination and grip, grit to climb that mountain will be a great capacity in life, no matter if you continue in academia or move on. So parents and partners and family, 
Take a look at your loved ones. See how proud they are. This is why. Congratulations to the 2023 generation of PhD researchers. Now I would like to ask Annika Zorn on the stage, director of PhD, to support me in handing over the congratulation letters to uh, the PhD researchers and Cornelia Wohl, the president, as well. Christoph Abels. Tobias Bünder. Tarun Kanna. Maike Rackwitz. Maike Rackwitz. Diego Salazar Morales. Christina Samper Meyer. Uh -huh. Till Schöfer. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome on stage Juliane McCarty, Manager, Executive Master of Public Administration. Dear President, dear faculty and staff of the Hertie School, esteemed friends, family, and guests, dear class of 2023, and dear EMPA, graduates. This year holds a special significance as it marks the first time that the Executive Master of Public Administration program joins the grand ceremony alongside the PhD and the other master's programs. This integration symbolizes the immense value and significance that the EMPA holds for our school and that you hold for the Hurti community. It is also the first time that I have the great honor to say a few words at your graduation. 
first and foremost, of course, I extend my heartfelt congratulations to each and every one of you. Congratulations, not only on having added a challenging academic degree to your long list of achievements, but to your perseverance. Returning to university mid-career holds many more challenges than earlier in life. Throughout your studies, you juggled demanding professional roles, dedicating weekends to reading materials and crafting papers after exhausting weeks spent on working overtime on pivotal projects. You balanced family responsibilities or welcomed children in your life. Some among you devoted long hours in front of screens, steady fastly, following the program online amidst the pandemic. Others relocated to Berlin, leaving behind loved ones and careers, relinquishing salaries to embark on a year dedicated to the pursuit of knowledge and growth. Throughout your journey in the program, you have acquired knowledge, skills, tools, and insights that will undoubtedly shape your future endeavors. You have studied the complexities of public administration, owned your leadership abilities, and embraced innovative approaches to tackle the most pressing challenges faced by societies worldwide. And today's world is in dire need of individuals like you, with your expertise, your passion, and unwavering commitment to public service and the greater good. But your achievements are not simply a measure of academic success. They are a testament to your resilience, determination, and ability to navigate through adversity. You stand as an inspiration to us all. And I would like to echo your peers. The EMPA is not only what you learn in the classroom. It is about learning from and connecting with the extraordinary group of individuals that comprises the EMPA program. Managing this program and having the opportunity to work alongside each of you has been an immense joy, and I extend my deepest gratitude for allowing me to be part of your extraordinary journey. Now, as you venture back into your respective roles or embark upon new professional pursuits, I implore you to remain an integral part of this school as active alumni, guest speakers, in courses, practice partners, for students' master thesis, or even as prospective employers of our future graduates. Now, please join me in a big round of applause for the EMPA graduating class of 2023. And I would like to now welcome on stage Ashley Chia. Daniel Flohr. Joao Vitor Fonseca. Thies Hauk. Elena, oh, Elena Kowalewska, yeah. <laughs> Julia Lindholm. Diego Alejandro Rixe Morales.
Please welcome on stage the Dean of Graduate Programs, Professor Dr. Turit Hustedt. Dear President, dear faculty and staff of the Hattie School, proud parents, families, partners, friends and guests, dear class of 2023, It is my great honor and privilege today to acknowledge your accomplishments and your congratulating you to be the graduating class of 2023. Today, we are here to celebrate the achievements of our graduates who have completed their journey at the Hattie School. A journey of intellectual and academic growth, personal development, and a commitment to the common good. Throughout this journey, you graduate have been exposed to a vibrant and rigorous academic environment, one that has challenged you to think critically, to analyze complex problems, to deep dive into data and analysis, and to develop innovative solutions. We at the Hattie School believe that the power to shape the future lies within each and every one of you. And during your journey with us, you have proven this belief to be true time and time again. You went through coursework and assignments, through exam and presentations, wrote policy papers, embarked on internships, and engaged in policy discussions in student clubs. Whether your focus was on international security, data analysis, or human rights, or you were more into sustainability or innovation and managing change, you have demonstrated 
a commitment to making a positive impact and engaging into the many challenges the world is confronted with. But your journey at the Hetty School was not solely about individual accomplishments. It was also about collaboration, dialogue, and the exchange of ideas. In the diverse and vibrant community that we are proud to be, you had the opportunity to engage with your classmates from different backgrounds, cultures, and perspectives. You've learned from one another, broadened your horizons, and fostered lifelong friendships that transcend borders. Today, as I call each of your name, let us take a moment to reflect on the significance of this achievement. Each name represents countless hours of hard work, sleepless, sleepless nights, and the ups and downs of a long master thesis project. Each name represents a story of personal progress, resilience, and strong dedication. As you prepare to embark on a new chapter of your lives, I urge you to carry on the spirit of the Hattie School. Be courageous in taking up new challenges. Be confident in your ability to achieve and empathetic in your interactions with others. Remember that the knowledge and skills you have acquired at the Hattie School are not merely tools for your personal success, but instruments to help make the world a better place. This world, filled with complex challenges, needs leaders like you, who have the expertise, the skills, and determination to shape tomorrow. To the class of 2023, I extend my heartfelt congratulations. The Hattie School is so immensely proud of you. So, to extend our congratulations, I will now start calling our Master of Poli Public Policy class 2023 to stage. Let, let us give a strong applause to our first graduate, Joshua Pomeroy Ahern. Iba Ahmad. <laughs> Olivia Ellis Louise Eitken. <laughs> Francisco Almeida. Javier Antonio Alvarez Helves. <laughs> Sergio Ampuria. <laughs> Teresa N. Anderson. Laura Milushka Abulu Vasquez. <laughs> Richik Pantyopatyai. <laughs> Shinnet Barry. Leonard Manfred Baum. <laughs> Jakob Bechtolsheim. <laughs> Jan
Paulina Belluli. Paula Betzing. Anuba Batia. Rosa Maria Blach. Christian Botz. Daniel Assis Brito. Julian Brummer. Jose Campos de Toledo. Andrea Cassetta. Diego Chagas de Sousa. Julia Kotz Kapel. Adria Das. Beatrice De Mare. Guglielmo De Puppi. Federica Del Año Toro. <laughs> Paul Justus Denfeld. <laughs> Camille Desreo. Adriana Carolina Diaz Suarez. Samuel Theodreves. Lea Endres. India English. <laughs> Danae Valentina Fana Rivera. <laughs> Lucrezia Flavia Ferretti. Charlotte Fürzlaff. <laughs> Alina Florio. <laughs> 
Susan Flynn. Lauren Flynn. Lisa Fontanella. Renato Ventocilla Franco. Ariana Friedmann. Ludwig Elias Gantner. Andres Garrido. Sarah Gag. Matthias Jimenez. <laughs> Graham Gordon. <laughs> Esteban Gracia Leon. Sarah and Gribble. <laughs> Niklas Guzman. <laughs> Robert Heimbach. Jessica Higgins. Michael Heinz. <laughs> Cynthia Edith Waya Wayanalaya. Saurab Mukaish Shain. Marlin Abeli Johnson. Viang Vivek Jumle. Charlotte Kaste. Ria Kairival. Shibani Kuntia. Maria Kipp. Tall Kleinmann.
Alexander Kress. Corinna Miriam Kratzke. Rasmus Jonathan Kriest. Patia Zatrio. Nino Quaretzkelia. Alessandra Landa. Moritz Lankes. Sonja Laukemper. <lacht> Katharina Lehmkuhl. <lacht> Neue Aero Jacques Letourneux. Andres Linares Pulido. Elias Fabian Lengnau. Tessa Rose Lozier. Verena Lob. Daniel Felipe Lopez. Paula Andrea Lozano Ortiz. Janina Luc Rullier. Victoria Machado. Victoria Julie Noel May. Luca Mario. Octave Masson. Camilla Fernanda Mata Maulen. Ellen Mallorca. <laughs> Alina Maria Menokal Peters.
Madame Rita Menon. Maralena Moro. Bali Motsueneng. <laughs> Lukas Matthias Müller. Daniel James Mancaster. Shruti Naik. Aniket Naravat. Kim Joshua Niemann. Tommaso Nigra. Ophelia del Carmen Ortega Damian. Melissa Özelik. Siddharth Patmanaban. <laughs> Tobias Palmowski. <laughs> Francesco Panni. Jacopo Alberto Pastorelli. <laughs> Julia Annalise Paxton. Oh. Abigail Pena Alejos. Frederick Ansgar Javier Pena Sims. <laughs> Natalie Ann Petit. <laughs> Horatio Ruben Pesolato. Lea Alex Pfau. <laughs> Ferdinand Plattenberg. <laughs> Anusha Gwenda Rayan. David Alonso Ramos Felix. <laughs> Christina Rau. <laughs> 
Norma Sarai resendes Traves. Daniel Rias. Stefanie Roy. Victoria Ruselit. Camilla Bertoni Sanchez. Marco Sanchez Arias. Jorge Sanchez Canales. Maria Angeles Sanchez Medina. Kabia Mandela Sandrolini. Francesca Sardi. Luise Schäfer. <lacht> Helena Schmidt. <lacht> Natascha Schopel. Marco Sibona. Karen Elizabeth Sichez Escura. Disha Singh. Sophia Soto Reyes. Malte Ferdinand Spielmann. Lara Sophie Steinhübel. Lisa Antonia Sigrid Ursula Stolleis. Kirsten Stone. Elisabeth Stumpfoll. Shubranshu Suman. Rian at Young. Milat Tabesh.
Simon Terhorst. Sophia Todd Tambini. Michal Tripathi. Maria Paula Unigaro Alba. Laura Daniela Uribe. Daniela Emilce Uribe Matteo. Katharina Vasilakis. Anna Elisa van Borstel da Silva. Amelie von Lente. Sophie Franziska Marie von Wutenau. Katharina Wujovic. Felix Wedemeyer. Camilla Weinmann. Jesse Eleni Wester. Kyra Wider. Leo Balthasar Wiedemann. Emma Gail Winter. Alice Shu. Yao Yang. Anda René Yoshina. Sarah Zarges. And Fabian Subiki. So, congratulations again. Everybody come up front.
I will, I will count. I will count to three, and then you throw your scarves, and the the picture will be taken from the balcony. So one, two, three. <laughs> Please, one last time. One more time, scarves collecting. One more. One, two, three. myself all day I was so lost back then but with a little help from my friends I found the light in the tunnel at the end and now you're calling me up on the phone so you can have a little wine and a moan and it's only because you're feeling
Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back on stage Turit Husted. Now I have the great pleasure to introduce to you the student speakers of the class of 2023. Columba Martinez Cooper and Aura Abolu Vasquez. Columba joined the Master of International Affairs at the Hetty School in 2021 after having received a Bachelor in Psycho Psychology and International Relations from Rollins College. At the Hetty School, she studied international affairs with a focus on global governance and human rights. Columba worked for the Chilean Minister of Foreign Affairs on bilateral trade and commerce relations, and she did an internship at the Chilean consulate. She has also worked as a research assistant doing qualitative data coding and analysis. Columba is particularly interested in diplomacy, international civil society, and human rights organizations. Aura joined the Hattie School from Peru and is now a graduate of our Master of Public Policy. She received a law degree from the Universidad de San Martín de Porres in Peru, and she has experience in parliamentary affairs from her home country. During her time at the school, Aura further developed her policy analysis skills. She has been involved in implementing projects that promote political education among young people all around the world. Aura is particularly interested in the topics of decentralization, elections, and democracy. Due to the tireless commitment to the Hattie School, and in particular to their fellow students, Columba and Aura were voted to be the student speaker of today's ceremonies. <laughs> Columba and Aura, and let me allow this remark, are leading examples for what makes the student of the Hattie School such a special group of young and talented people. We are so grateful to have you as our graduates now, and we are looking very much forward to what you have to say and what you have to share with all of us. So the stage is yours. Thank you. Yes. Bueno, uno. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, to it for giving us a presenting us. Um, so, well, here it is. The great day has arrived, June 23rd, the Hurdy School graduation of 2023. We were thinking most of the time, how are we going to deliver this speech? We have watched all these speeches from the past few years in Hurdy. And we were, wow, this speech is really good. This one, might not be so great. <laughs> and with two people, it might be a bit distracting, but how do we deliver a speech that can represent the Hurti community? So we thought, what about like the Oscars? Mm -hmm. You know, like presenting an award, but in this opportunity, presenting the Hurti 2023 class, two women presenting the class. And yes, so this is our way of introducing us, the Hurt 23 graduates. Good afternoon, graduates, their families, beloved ones, and everyone in between. Thank you for being here. Thank you for traveling to those who had the chance to do it. And those who are not here, hey there. Uh, but in some way, you are here with, in Berlin with us too. So let's start talking about ourselves before Berlin and Hurdy. Do you remember you? Many of us came here thinking that our main goal was to simply graduate and get a degree from a prestigious school. I mean, we made it. But was that the most exciting thing about our journey? We came thinking that we wanted something, but we ended up finding many other things along the way that have made us the people that we are today. And we were faced with many hard choices and challenges in between. For some, it was moving to a completely new country with a completely new language and leaving home behind, leaving everything that made ourselves and our lives comfortable. For others, it was coming to a new academic environment and having to make new friends in such a diverse cohort, as well as simultaneously 
understanding each other and respecting each other's values and customs. For some, it was also to be faced with hard deadlines as well as maintaining a job, a social life, or just trying to eat something that wasn't a donor with a beer, or well, maybe three. Let's think about that MDS student. Yes. <laughs> that came to Herty in 2022. We have all heard those scary stories, but let's look at them today. Life kind of got better, right? And thanks to them, the next cohort will suffer just a little bit less. Because Herty, and in some way Berlin, is about community. It's about finding your place, your people, what moves you, and ultimately, it's about freedom and what you do with that tremendous power. For our parents and beloved ones, Herty was not only about studying. Herty was about seeing Hertians getting together. When we arrived, the COVID-19 pandemic was still a thing. Even when we were promised a room full of discussions, that was tough. Also, not everyone arrived on time because visas for some countries were delivered when the semester already started. So some people came to Germany when everyone else already had their group of friends. And talking about this, can we imagine how hard it was to find a group for the people who came for dual degree? And even for those who didn't exchange semester, but aren't they now really important in our lives? Can we also remember the role of Hertian students when the Russian aggression on Ukraine happened? Hertians got together and helped the welcoming of refugees, going to demonstrations, speaking up, and some even wrote their thesis about the ongoing work. Or when a group of Hertians got together to raise awareness about the situation in Turkey and Syria after the earthquake. That was, and that is, the class of 2023. But Herty was also about its clubs. Also the ones outside of Herty. Shout out to the people that got into Berheim. So it was, yes, also. <laughs> it was the Herty Latam Club, doing its best of its capacities to organize a conference against all the odds. It was the African Policy Club, bringing stories about countries creating futures and its challenges. It was the Herty Pride Network, trying to gather people. <laughs> trying to gather people and being a place to just be, as Berlin allows. It was the Hertians delivering incredible food and making all the Hertians happy, especially the barbecue in the terrace. It was the, <laughs> it was the Herty, um, gosh, it was a Herty hiking, organizing fun hikes for the, to the forest for people with and without experience. It was the Herty bouldering, teaching us how to climb, but also fall with a smile. Um, it was also the Herty Tech Society, with events worried about the future of AI, but also, thanks ChatGPT, huh? <laughs> it was the yoga club, trying to help us improve our mental health. All these efforts and activities to create a wider and inclusive community were led by students with a tight budget, but also a very big heart. Can you see all that we have done and the world of opportunities we have now? Also, through our journey at Herty, there's been certain people that have always been there to give us a helping hand when we most need it, or maybe not. First, we have to thank someone that is not here physically, but always in our hearts, Mr. and Mrs. Foreman. <laughs> for being there daily in the cafeteria, listening to all of us scream and speak loudly and passionately. Thank you to the student life team, including Judith and Mariana. Thanks a lot, Mariana, for everything. <laughs> Who were always there to listen and give us the support needed to move forward with the day, especially when we needed help printing something in color because we still cannot figure it out. We can't forget the library team, who kept us calm through the TC season, and also a special thanks to Matt, always there for the sound and video at Herty, one of the guys that is always there to make the events possible. 
Thanks to Luis Mejia, the front desk team, the people in career development, and the many other departments at Herty School. And finally, thank you to the Herty professors that makes everything better. To those who understood that sometimes students were overwhelmed. To those who were tough enough to make us go back on track. To those who take more time than the office hours. To those who make it possible for us to graduate. Thanks to all, especially to Gregor, Monica, Will, Kai, Ariana, Michaela, Zurich. Thank you. And yeah, this was part of our journey at Herty, and somehow, and I think most of us know how, we made it. We made it. And the path, the, woo, the path was not easy, and only each of us can tell what was the path was about. But we all have something in common. We couldn't have done it alone. Without each other, we wouldn't be here right now. Wow, that was intense. So let's get back and talk about us now, us in Berlin and this moment in our life in transition. There are so many stories to tell about this because each of us had different struggles, the visa, the money, the doubts, the family, the friends. But coming to Herty has not only, grown pro has not only helped us grow professionally, but personally as well. Some of us learned how to create re research design while others were focusing on how to solve problems with R. Some of us have also learned how to be more independent while still being true to our core values. For many, this moment is about making choices. Are we staying in Berlin? Are we going back home? Or maybe Brussels, or Lima, or Singapore, or Dakar? Some are thinking about how hard the future looks now because we're only getting a little glimpse. Some are feeling nostalgia and uncertainty while others are questioning themselves if coming to a different country or different city was the right choice. Some are trying to create a new view or perspective of life after losing someone they loved or dealing with a disease or maybe even welcoming someone new into their lives. We created a survey so that Hurricanes could tell us their most precious memories in this one or two or three years. And one of them was that they met their love of their life at Hurdy. Hashtag Hurdy love. Starting from a friendship, it flourished into love. How lucky it is to find love in Berlin, though. How's it going for the rest of us, I wonder? <laughs> um, these are different journeys, but they're our journeys. But again, one thing we did remain constant, and that was the support and encouragement from each other. How many countries are represented here? Specifically, 55. This opens a door for all of us of opportunity. We, here at Herdy, are a community that will be here when some of us need a little push. It is important to remark the ability for us to create a home away from home. And, to, and trust me, we're still supporting each other, asking each other how the job search is going, if you've gotten your job seeking visa appointment, or sometime, even after all this time, asking if you finally have an Almeldung. So, what happens tomorrow? For some, we'll wake up with a huge hangover of happiness, right? Uh, others will continue to enjoy the last days with their families here, or the last dates in Berlin before taking the journey back home. But never forget that you will always have a home within Herty, someone to call for advice, someone to call for great news or bad ones, always a friend to lean on. To lean on. Nevertheless, and someone already stole our quote, quote in Spider-Man, with great power comes great responsibility. So what did our dreams look like before coming to Herty? Have they changed? What are we going to do about them? That's the path that we call the future. The Herty bubble, a bubble that comes not only with a big set of knowledge, skills, network, and opportunities, but this bubble puts us in a tricky position we need to answer the question, what are we going to do with this power? How will we shape our world, our country, our city, our business, our communities? Mistakes will be made for sure, but also we will be right about that many things.
And in that sense, we are constantly thinking about how to use this power, and we ask ourselves and the Herty leadership, can we, do, can we do more with this power? We all believe in a sustainable future, and Herty, the Herty School of Governance is holding several events and research, in, and it has a research center about it. Shouldn't the sustainable idea be a core value in all the Herty environment, including the Herty Foundation? We ask for transparency about how the foundation is investing in order to be consistent with the purpose of the foundation, especially if we are in the most important school of governance in Germany. So, it's important to remember our values, even when we are so different, even when we come from different backgrounds, even when we comprehend things different, because in some years we will see it again, maybe in an alumni meeting, maybe in Bogota, in Estocolm, in Mumbai, in DC, in Chiclayo. And we will have to answer to our peers what we did with that great power, what as individuals we decided to achieve, what problem we decided to solve. Are we happy with our life choices? I hope that after that good cup of coffee or tea, most of us can have an honest conversation about our lives and see the past as the journey that we wanted. So we stand here. Oh. Esto no. Yeah. So we stand here and thank each one and every one of you, fellow friends, family, and again, everyone in between, for giving us your undeniable support, for allowing us to be us when we needed it the most, and for pushing us to be even greater than we ever thought. Thank, thank you. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Just we did it. Okay. okay, thank you. <laughs> we did it. So, today we celebrate the graduation of the Master of Data Science for Public Policy class of 2023. which holds a special place in the history of the Hertie School because it is our inaugural cohort of that program. And this group that I will call to stage in just a second has not only showcased their excellence and competence in studying a challenging and fast-moving field, but has also demonstrated remarkable resilience in navigating the unique obstacles that come with being pioneers of a graduate degree program. As our first cohort, uh, first cohort of data scientists for public policy graduates, you've taught us invaluable lessons, and we are very grateful for that. Please join me in a round of applause as we celebrate the graduation of our inaugural cohort of the Master for Data Science for Public Policy. I now invite you state to stage the president to hand over the certificates to our data science graduates. And I call the first to stage Maria Adel Gia Toledo Arbo. Helena Bakic. <laughs> Katalin Bayer. <laughs> Dominic Robin Kramer. Gabriel Da Silva Zek. Janine Pascua de Vera. Anna Kuna Kunya Denise.
Angela Maria Duarte Pardo. Lorenzo Angelo Giovanni Gini. Johannes Maria Hackenhäuser. Julian Kart. Krishna Morti Manohara. Anna Veronika Matisiak. Viktor Karl Möslein. Dina Rabe. Maren Anna Saskia Rika. Marco Schild. Benedikt Pirmin Ströbel. Applaus Lukas Warode. Applaus Andrew Wells. Nassim Swaini. So congratulations. Mama, da ist keine Band zu sehen. So, finally, we've reached the moment to honor our Master of International Affairs class of 2023. The Master of International Affairs degree equips them with the specialized knowledge and skills necessary to navigate the intricate dynamics of diplomacy, international relations, and global governance. 
to ensure a greater understanding and meaningful engagement in today's global complex and global landscape. Their expertise will undoubtedly contribute to addressing pressing global issues with a nuanced, empathetic and informed perspective. Let us all come together and join in a big applause for the class of 2023 of our Master of International Affairs. And I now invite our first MIA graduate to the stage, and that is Duncan Nicholas Allen. Kasra <laughs> Azimivaga. Michaela Bass. Edward James Harry Beals. Richard Beil. Philip Bernard. <laughs> Alice Bizio. <laughs> Alessandro Lorenzo Blanc. Boglaka Borosh. Simon Breukmann Estelle. Alexandre Paul Buller. Margot Kai. <laughs> Joanna Magdalini Karibides. <laughs> Adieu Rana Heina. Chiara Rose Kotzi. Andrew Patrick Denick. Austin Chandler Davis. Alina Laura Elsken. Anna Forström. Eleanor Catherine Gagnon. Oyeshi Ganguli. <laughs> Debayan Gosh. <laughs> A 
Oskar Gläse. Varad Godase. Christian Gröber. Annik Hartmann. Joshua Dario Hasenstab. Claire Heidacker. Aishat Taima Hisham. Etienne Laurin Joel Hörer. Lindsay James. Stian Jensen. Florian Kehler. <laughs> Felix Ernst Gillis Carlson. <laughs> Mareike Ulrike Carla Kernstock. Khalil Khalifa. <laughs> France Julian Klatt. <laughs> Yangya Shri Kodaru. Dylan Köhler. Dino Kolonic. Veleslava Miaela Danielova Kachunova. Amanda Lee Yoon Criley. <laughs> Lucas Alexandre Kravliecki. <laughs> Jan Kjell Lange. Cornelius Lauritzen. Janina Lehmann. Lekai Liu.
Colomba Martinez. Antonia Katharina Merz. Adrian Mendoza Striluk. Thomas James Mino. Sophia Moon. <laughs> Alessandro Monastra. <laughs> Stefano Samuel Montali. Ranim Irfan Munchi. Anusha Vasant Mayak. Fatu Jia. Philemon Nomikos. <laughs> Emma Olsen. <laughs> Janani Patmanaban. Amara Ellen Phillips. <laughs> Yasha Pocha. <laughs> Laura Post Segura. Pomaira Ranoma. <laughs> Matteo Rodriguez. <laughs> Kevin Schiller Rosenthal. Kritika Roy. Ashwin Rosé Roy. Nirai Tom Savio. Joshua Sanda. Celia Amelie Anneliese Ursel Schiller. Robert Marian Schirmer. Kira Maria Helga Schrödel.
Muhammad Ali Sen. Eduardo Snydero. Waylon Snyder. Ariana Sparriero. Martin Mita Srini Vasamorti. Sophia Rebecca Stadrini. Eike Sören Stau. Ada Cimciekiewicz. Stefan Johannes Thurm. <lacht> Silvia Tossato. <lacht> Antonia Johanna Wagner. Jessie Chon Wai. <laughs> Remy Alexandre Weber. <laughs> Agatha Weidemann. Talent Hilleli. So congratulations. Okay, and now again the scarf shoot. I count to three. One, two, three. And one more time. Scarves collected. I count to three. One, two, three.
So, as in all good ceremonies, there is one hiccup. And today's hiccup was that we forgot to call one student of the Master of International Affairs up on stage, and I would like to catch up. So please give a round of applause to Ishwarya Tripathi. Now that absolutely everybody holds their diplomas in hands, we come to a very special part of this year's graduation ceremony and a true Harty School tradition, the Master Thesis Poster Award. Each student is required to submit a poster alongside their written thesis, which is meant to describe their research findings in a creative and appealing way. A jury then determines the best posters which will receive an award in just a second. As you know, we live in a time of crises and all require leaders' attention and commitment. Important research findings compete with disinformation and hatred, which often go viral in today's media and public discourse. Climate change and the COVID-19 pandemic are just recent examples of this phenomenon. Therefore, we are convinced that learning how to communicate scientific findings successfully is a skill more crucial than ever for anyone working in public policy today. Whenever I walk through the hallways of the Hattie School and see the theses posters of previous cohorts, I am truly impressed by the ideas and skills of our Hattie students. I'm also more hopeful for the future because I see which extraordinary people now apply their skills in the real world and you will now be one of them. Before I announce this year's four winning posters, I would like to thank the members of the jury, our PhD researcher, Jan van Hussen, who initiated the process, Kinga Laura Koriani, Maike Rachwitz, Greta Frederike Groß, Vincent Gerald Ramos, and Lynn Gao, who shortlisted 20 submissions from all the posters that were submitted. Our professors, Luciana Cingolani, Ariana Onagin, and Shuba Prasad, 
then chose the winning submissions. We're very grateful to all of them for their work. So without further ado, let me announce the winners of this year's Master Thesis Poster Award. I will first read out their titles and then their names so you can applaud, and then I will ask them all to come on stage together. This year's Poster Award winners are, with the work on For Better or For Worse, an analysis of the relationship between partnership status and the economic well-being of the elderly in Spain, Julia Kotz Capel from the MPP. For joint work entitled All Hands on Deck, Addressing the Rule of Law Crises in the European Union, Lessons from Hungary and Greece, we have two winners, Silvia Tosato and Jan Kiel Lange from the MIA. For his poster thesis on No First Use Doctrine in South Asia, a case study of India's nuclear doctrine, Niraj Tom Savio of the MIA. And finally, the long road to implement performance budgeting, the case of Peru from Diego Alejandro Rixe of the EMPA. Congratulations to all five. Now please join me on stage. Dear, now officially, graduates of 2023. You have made it. With your diplomas in hand, you now have proof of the fact that you've reached a remarkable moment in your life, a conclusion and also a new beginning. I always remember such moments as being in their own way full of ambivalence, between a tingling anticipation of what will be and a looming farewell to the things you will surely miss. Indeed, studying is one of the most exciting times in one's life. That's not to say that it is easy. Meeting deadlines, working on the side, forging new friendships, and for many, living in an unfamiliar, buzzing, and sometimes relentless city you bravely overcame so many hurdles and fought hard to achieve this extraordinary success. I commend you for that from the bottom of my heart. Indeed, you graduate in times which are heavy with challenges, and it is easy, easy to become either apathetic or bitter when we look at the health of our planet, the excruciating Russian war of aggression in Ukraine, the earthquakes in Turkey and northern Syria, or the state of violence against the brave women of Iran. All these crises point to systematic failures to react when there was still time. Too many have closed their eyes in the past, and the consequences are deeply troubling. Some of you might sometimes be removed from all that is happening in the world because we're still privileged and able to study normally in Berlin. Yet the interconnectedness of our global economic, political, and social worlds remind us that none is safe until we all are. Several of you have personal connections to family and friends in Ukraine, Turkey, Iran, Afghanistan, and other conflict-afflicted regions in the world. 
Ever since I've arrived, it has warmed my heart to observe your solidarity to those that are struggling. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz, when he addressed the Bundestag a few days after the brutal Russian invasion of Ukraine, coined the term Zeitenwende. He referred to the conclusion of an era during which the fundamentals of knowledge and practice are overturned, re-rooted, and sometimes even reversed. It is more than a change in policy. It is a reformulation of the reasoning and justification for political action. Indeed, as we look around the world today, it is clear that no less is in order. Now, why am I telling you this when you really want to go out and celebrate on a day where we really thought we were done with lecturing? Well, I do so because I am convinced that the solution to the problems that I've just outlined is you. Wherever your next steps will take you, I know that you have what it takes to tackle the most challenging global issues. Looking through the titles of your theses and posters, I am impressed with the breadth and depth of the fields you know well. Bringing about change is, of course, easier said than done. Being a champion for change requires patience and courage, and you will sometimes wonder whether you are capable of what is asked of you. Self-doubt is something we have all experienced over and over again. My piece of advice to you is this. Know what you're worth and persist, even when it is tough and the situation seems dire. You will not win all your battles. In fact, failure shows that at least you've tried. So please, fail as much as possible. It is important as a step in moving forward. Know that you cannot control everything. Just think of this ceremony, which we managed to land on the only rainy day in an entire month of sunshine. <laughs> but that will not stop us from celebrating. The diplomas you hold in your hands right now are the product of your hard work and proof of your skills and your abilities. You are the innovators and leaders the world needs today, and I'm convinced that you will be the generation to move faster, to not look away, to react when there is still time. In our graduate programs, you've learned not just theory, but also the challenges of political practice. In our Executive Master of Public Administration, you have proven able to dedicate yourself to learning while pursuing your career, and in many times, taking care of your family and loved ones. If you're here as a young Herr Doktor or Frau Doktor, you have managed to produce a PhD, which is only possible if you become incredibly good at disciplined time management and multitasking. In fact, I suspect that most of you will remember the Hattie School experience not just for what we taught you in class, but also, and perhaps more importantly, for what you had to master outside of the classroom. We hope that the networks and friendships, or more, that you discovered in the process were fundamental to making you succeed. Before we let you go into the new chapter of your life, I want to reassure you that the Hattie community will always be on your side and you will, as alumni, always be part of it. I want to encourage you to become active in our global alumni community with chapters all over the world. This is, I think, the most important message for you today. You are not alone in your efforts, dreams, and goals. No matter where you are in the world and what career you will pursue, our doors and ears are always open to you. Last but not least, I would like to thank those of you here today to celebrate our class of 23. The proud parents, spouses, partners, families, and friends. If it weren't for you, none of this would be possible. Nobody can be excel excellent by oneself. Listening to frustration, disappointment, anxieties, or offering support when we struggle. We all stand on the shoulders of those closest to us. I know many of you live far away and might have wished to have their loved ones closer to home. Thank you for letting them fly. And thank you for trusting us with guiding the class of 23 on their path. I think, dear graduates, it's time for you to rise and, grad and give a round of applause for those who came to watch your achievements on screen or in the room today.
In closing, I would like to mention the people who made today's wonderful event possible. Thank you to the Hathi School communication team, especially our event associate, Tuo Heidang, and the team director, Benjamin Stappenbeck. <laughs> I would also like to thank Anna Joachim Meyer on behalf of everyone at the examination office, Gabriel Tariba on behalf of the curricular affairs team, Annika Zorn on behalf of the PhD team, and Juliane McCarthy on behalf of the Executive Master of Public Administration. In addition, many colleagues volunteered on stage and backstage today and in the past weeks to help start and run the ceremony. Thank you to everybody for your dedication to our students and to the Hathi School. Let me conclude, dear class of 2023, with a word by the famous German author Hermann Hesse, who in his poem, Stufen, Basis, put the spirit of today's celebration in much better words than I could. Und jedem Anfang wohnt ein Zauber inne, der uns beschützt und der uns hilft zu leben. There is magic in every beginning, which protects us and which helps us live. Let us celebrate this magic with joy, curiosity, and anticipation. Let us celebrate it with trust and hope. Let us celebrate it together with excitement and a glass of champagne that is waiting for you at the reception. <laughs> you. Let us celebrate with the conviction that the world out there, dear graduates, is yours to shape. Thank you again and congratulations class of 2023.